admit all. Amazing. Hello. Hi. How are you? Julia? Good, you? Good. Bye. Nice to see you, everybody. I'm really excited to have a special guest today. So I'm going to go ahead and actually hit the record button. Oh, it's already recording. So, okay. Perfect. Okay. So, Thank you all from India. Amazing. Amazing. Nice to have you here. So I'm going to ask everybody to hit their mute button and we'll get started so, so that sure, sure, we sure. respect everybody's time. Awesome. All right. So thanks for being here, everybody. I'm really excited for today's class because this is always such, uh, I think that for me anyways, in the beginning of my business, throughout my business and during the journey, I'm always... Um, overwhelmed by Instagram and having to post and all that good stuff. So I'm really excited to have Allison here today with us. And I'm going to let Allison introduce herself and tell us a little bit about what she does and dive right into what we're here to talk about today. Well, thank you, Julie, for having me. Hi, You're everybody. welcome. I am super excited to um, come on this training because I believe that one of the biggest frustrations I hear from entrepreneurs is creating content for Instagram, how to show up authentically, right? Without posting, you know, things that come across as spammy or salesy, or we're afraid that we are talking about too much. And what happens is when we talk about too many things on Instagram, we will actually confuse our audience. So what I'm going to do today is I am going to share my screen and I am going to teach you the exact steps on how I create content on a monthly basis for Instagram, but I do it with simplicity and control. So I am not spending hours upon hours creating content, nor am I spending so much time on the platform. I, can be I believe that you can really build a strong audience and your business on Instagram without being on the platform all day long. You do not need to be sitting on the platform. So as I'm going through the training, feel free to either chat with Julie or um, you can unmute yourself and just, you know, interrupt me and ask me a question if you want me to go back to a slide. Um, Julie, just so you yeah. know, I will be giving you yeah. a copy of the slide decks. So, Julie, you're muted. <laughs> whenever, we have, we, whenever we have question, we can ask you. Yes, of course. Yeah, because it's going to be a lot of information. And I want to, you know, oh. to me, I've been doing this for so long, so it just comes out. But I want to make sure. But yeah, um, you're going to get a copy of the slide deck. So all the slides I'm showing you, you can just watch and consume it because you're going to get a copy. And built into the slide decks, I do have links. So you can, it's clickable. So it'll take you right to where you need to be. What an, what an amazing gift to share with us, uh, Allison. Oh, of course. You know me. I'm an Enneagram too, Julie. So you know yeah. me. I'm giving stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me share my screen. Let's see how this works. Okay. Let me move this over so I can actually see your beautiful faces. All right, so here we go. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah? Yes. All right, cool. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through um, content planning. It's a, it's a workshop that I've done it's kind of funny. This is the workshop that I've been asked to come into so many groups lately and teach. This is probably my seventh time teaching this in a different group to different people. So I'm starting to see a trend here that people, entrepreneurs need help with creating content, but we want to do it with simplicity and control. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to sit around each and every day trying to come up with something to post on Instagram, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, right? Do you have a question? Go ahead. For me. Yeah, for me, it's a big challenge to post content on Instagram. You know, it takes a long time how to create it, what a lack of ideas. All right, well, guess what? You're going to get a ton of ideas today, and I'm going to simplify the process for you because creating content shouldn't be hard. We, I think the problem is we're consuming so much content from other entrepreneurs that it starts to mess with our own mind and our own confidence. So my advice to you, if you ever find yourself consuming way too much content, 
and you're not implementing what you learn, stop following that person and stop consuming so much content. So what we're going to do today, here's what to expect. I'm going to show you my exact steps to planning monthly content. And then I'm going to go through how I batch weekly content. Plus you're going to get a free gift. And then of course, how we can connect on Instagram and how I can support you into growing your brand, growing your audience and your business on your social media platforms. All right. So before I jump into it, for, for you to really understand social media growth, all you need to remember are these three C's. Number one is clarity. You need to be crystal clear on your own brand. You need to have clarity on your audience and you need to have clarity on your Instagram intentions. Why are you even on the platform in the beginning? Why are you there? Think about that. Are you on Instagram to build relationships? Are you on Instagram to grow your email list? Are you on Instagram to build brand authority? And with brand authority, do you wanna show up on video? So have, have clarity on your own brand, your audience and your intentions for being on Instagram. You have to have that before you can even create the content. And that is the second C to growth. It's creating content. And that's what I'm going to dive deeply into today. And then once you have your content created, the third C is consistency. You have to show up consistent for your audience. And I'm going to tell you right now, your consistency is how you define it. So for you and your audience, because remember, you're going to go back to your clarity on your audience. You have to show up in a consistent manner for what they expect from you. So don't let other coaches out there tell you that you have to be on Instagram posting seven days a week, twice a day, and you need to be on IGTV video three times a week. Like, don't listen to that because just because that's what they're doing and it works for their business doesn't mean it's right for you. It doesn't mean it's going to help move the needle in your business. You have to figure out your own clarity. And once you have clarity and you have your content, then you're going to determine your consistency and it's how you do it. You're going to take control of your actions on Instagram. Don't let other people control it for you because that's when imposter syndrome, you know, gets in. I'm a huge Marvel fan. Julie knows this. I always talk about my favorite supervillain, Loki. If you've been following me for a long time, you know my love for Loki, but I always say, don't be Loki on Instagram. Don't mimic what other people are doing and don't try to transform your brand, your newsfeed into something that it's not. All right. So who's ready for some content creation? I know I am. We, we do that so much, eh, Allison? Like, like compare and yep. try to do what others are doing when really you will find that that doesn't work. You'll, you'll end up discovering that that doesn't work for you because you really need to be your authentic, true self. And that's why I go back to Loki. Think of it at the end of the day. Did it work mm -hmm. out for him? It did not. It blew up in his face. And that's what's <laughs> going to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. yes. Try to mimic what other people are doing or to try to transform into somebody you're not. It's not going to help you. You're actually just going to slow your growth down. All right. So let's jump into mapping out content for the month. So here is step one. This is all you need to do. And this is so basic, you guys, is I literally... Every month, I will print out a monthly calendar, and all I do is I look at the month, and I will fill in any holidays that I want to talk about, okay? So we're coming up to March, and I'm Irish, as I'm wearing green, and St. Patrick's Day is in March. I'm going to circle that bad boy on my calendar because I know I'm going to want to post about St. Patrick's Day. Either it's going to be a fun post or, you know, a relatable post that I'm Irish, it's part of my heritage, and then I might have a CTA. Do you guys celebrate St. Patrick's Day? What's your heritage? Do I have any Irish people in my, you know, community? So that's the first step is I'm going to fill in any holidays that I want to talk about on Instagram. 
And then step two, I'm going to fill in any special events that maybe I'm attending or I'm doing or any special offers in my business. I am going to put that down in my calendar first that I want to post. Okay. So that's step one. And I print it out in my Facebook group. Julie, you know this. I provide a monthly calendar every single month. So I've already put out March's content calendar in my Facebook group. And I already have in there, I already fill in national fun holidays or, you know, big major holidays. It's already on the calendar. So my group, all they have to do is circle what they want to talk about if they're going to acknowledge any holidays for the month. So that is step one is have the calendar in front of you. You want to look at the entire month and mark down your holidays or special events. Okay. So step one, pretty easy, right? Step two is once I've done that, I will decide on a monthly theme or a focus. So for myself, for February, my focus for February, I jotted down in like, you know, a blank space on my calendar. I'm like, all right, I'm going to focus on my Instagram quiz because I created a new quiz. I'm going to focus on my group coaching and I'm going to focus on my podcast because I released a bonus episode every single month in February to help my audience build their brand on Instagram. So that was my focus. And then I also did a video challenge. So I wrote down my focus for the month because I wanted to remember to create content around my focus or around my theme. Now, I always make sure that whatever my focus or my theme for the month is, it is going to point back to one of my three or five brand or content pillars. And a lot of people get tripped up by this term. Oh my gosh, content pillars, brand pillars, what on earth is that? All it is, is what do you want to be known for in your business? So when someone goes to your website or your Instagram profile and they're digging through your newsfeed or your content, they should be able to figure out pretty quick what you're all about. So for example, my brand pillars for my business, is personal branding, content creation and planning, Instagram growth and marketing, and business motivation. That's all I want to be known for in my business. So I make sure any content that I'm going to create, that content is going to point back to one of my four brand pillars. And the reason that I think it's great to come up with content or brand pillars, it's going to keep you consistent. It's going to keep your message consistent with your audience so you're not confusing them. Because you want to be the go-to person in your niche. You want to make sure that you're not talking about all these. You don't want too many spokes coming off of your brand because you are going to confuse the heck out of your audience. And they're going to go, well, I really don't know what you know he or she stands for because they're just giving me everything. I don't know what you know what they're you know an authority, right? So those are my four brand pillars. That's all I talk about. 80% of my content on Instagram is gonna be my brand pillars. The other 20% is gonna be my fun personality side because we gotta remember that on Instagram, we got to be personal. It's a personal, you know, we're making connections, right? So we don't want to be all about business because people want to know the person behind the brand, all right? People come to me because they know I'm fun, I'm sassy, I talk about Marvel and Loki, they know I'm movie obsessed, they know I'm coffee obsessed, they know I'm sweatpants obsessed, right? I show my personal side but I'm also helping them grow their business on Instagram. So don't be afraid to take 20% of your content and show up as you, all right? Share them what makes you. Are you an introvert or extrovert and why? I just did that one, I think this week, Julie, that you know I'm an introvert and people are like, what, you're an introvert? I'm, yes, I'm an introvert. And I still struggle showing up on video, but I push myself because I know it's going to help and motivate my audience. And I know there's a lot of people in my situation and I'm going to show them that you can do it, okay? Because if I'm 
teaching how to be authentic, I need to be authentic too. So I need to share my vulnerabilities with my audience. I need to share what I like and what I don't like in my niche. So that's step number two is decide on your theme or focus. Now from here, it's you can possibly map out a daily theme if you wanted to. So I gave an example here. On Mondays, maybe Mondays is your days to talk about what's new. It can be in your business. Maybe there's a new trend in your niche. Maybe it's something new in your personal life. Tuesdays can be something that's relatable. Wednesdays can be maybe if you have a podcast, that's the days that you're going to talk about your new episodes. If you're a blogger and you're blogging every week, maybe Wednesdays is when you talk about your new blog post. If you're a YouTuber, whatever you want. This is something that I am doing this month. I'm doing it a little different like I used to because it's actually making it a lot easier to plan when I have daily themes. So for example, on Thursdays, I'm doing either a tip with an infographic or I'm going to do a quote or carousel post. So I know on Thursdays, that's what I'm going to do. And then on Fridays, I'm talking about all my you know, coaching that I offer or how people can work with me or my freebies. So you can do daily themes if you want to. Now, step three, this is what I used to do, and this is very, very effective and makes it very easy to plan out your monthly content, is you want to, first of all, decide for yourself, what's your consistency going to be? How many days a week will you commit to posting? You decide that for yourself. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you need to show up seven days a week on Instagram to grow your audience. Julie, I'm going to swear here. That's bull crap. Okay. It's baloney. <laughs> swear away. Yeah, and I love, I love that you're pointing this out because sometimes we have the, cons- the preconception that, you know, what be to, in order to stay consistent, we have to show up every day, but it's, I love that you point out that that's not the case. And so I think that realizing this and knowing this makes it less overwhelming for us to go out there and create content. Yes. I'm going to punch conventional wisdom yeah. in the throat. You do yeah. not yeah. need to show up seven days a week. Mm-hmm. We think we think that we need to create 30 days Instagram post in advance, you know, no Sunday, no Monday. But I really appreciate your point yeah. because I never heard this, that you need to be consistent, be it two times or five times. Yeah, you decide what it is for you. You know your business better. You know your yeah. audience better. So how can I sit here and tell you that you need to do it seven days a week? That, that's just ridiculous. I'm not going to do that. You decide for you what's consistent. And if you have to move things around, Absolutely. So that is for the people who have already existing audience. What about those who are just starting and they are very new in the business who are just, you know, uh, trying to explore the sea of this. So don't have a quite full of audience. What should they do? They Should they do go with the seven days? What do you say? If you want to, if you feel that you have the capacity in your business to And I'm going to show you how I batch on a weekly basis. If you have time in your business to sit down and say, all right, this week, I'm going to post seven days this week and I'm going to batch it, which I'm going to show you how to do that, then great, do it. So, but if you're in the beginning stages of building your platform, building your audience, and you want to get seen and recognizable on Instagram, and you really want to help your audience and you're trying to get that engagement this next step is going to help you because I'm going to give you all the Instagram categories and the content ideas to help you with that. This is going to help you build your brand, your presence on Instagram. And you can even take this and apply it to Facebook. You can apply it to LinkedIn. You can apply it to TikTok. You can even apply this to your email campaigns. That's what's so cool about these categories and the content ideas you can apply it to any platform that fits your business. So let's talk about, um, I've already said, look at your calendar for the month. You filled in your holidays, you filled in your special offers, right? Now, based on your schedule that you want to do, your consistency, you're going to fill in the rest of your calendar with what I call content categories. All this means is, is your post types. And this is going to help you stay consistent with your message so you don't confuse your audience. This is how you're going to build those relationships with your audience. And they're going to learn quickly 
what you're all about. So let's dive into the content categories that I have for you today. The first one I have is an about me, and this freaks people out because they're like, they're afraid to talk about themselves. I'm going to tell you right now, the more you talk about you and the person behind the brand, you are more relatable to your ideal audience. And a trend that's happening on Instagram right now is people are moving away from following the celebrity type influencers, and they're following people who are more like them because they mirror their everyday life experiences. So for example, I'd rather follow someone who is a stay-at-home working mom, building a business on the side, juggling her life with kids, than someone who already makes seven figures in their business and is sitting at a little coffee shop in Italy talking about her great life. I'm sorry, I don't relate to that. I'm not going to follow that picture perfect person who has the picture perfect feed. That's not relatable. And people are smart. People know when they look on Instagram and see all these perfect people, that's not reality. That's their highlight reel. So I'm going to tell you right now, that is a false narrative that they're showing you. I'd rather see the mom at home with a messy house with laundry all over the floor as she's trying to work on her laptop and she's got, you know, coffee from nine o'clock in the morning and she's had to reheat it three times in the microwave. Hallelujah. I'm following her and I'm going to relate to her. So don't be afraid to show your reality behind the business, behind the scenes. So you want to make sure it's really important to personalize your business by sharing things about you. So that's category number one. So all you have to do on that calendar is maybe pick you know, two days out of the month and jot down about me. That's when I'm gonna share with my audience something about me. Another category is my why. Share the reason why you're whatever, if you're a photographer, if you're a coach, if you're in the wellness space. It's a way your audience feels connected. And I love this quote by Simon. And I always say this, people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Okay. People want to know why you do what you do. Another great category is behind the scenes. Pull back the curtain and show your audience the real life behind the business. Nine out of 10 times in my newsfeed, a selfie of me sitting at my mess, messy desk with my coffee and my dog at my feet always per performs better than a beautiful branded photo of me done by a professional photographer. Always. Because people relate to your real behind the scenes. Another great category is personal insights. Go ahead and share your wisdom or experiences as, you know, if you're a photographer or coach or whatever your niche is, or some fun facts in a way your audience can connect with it. And you can also um, talk about, I just said, I'm going to punch conventional wisdom in the throat. I have no problem getting on Instagram with my personal insights telling you, you don't need to post seven days a week. I'm going against the grain in my niche a little bit. And that's how I stand out. So, go, you know, don't be afraid of that. If there's something in your niche that you don't agree with or it drives you crazy, talk about it because that's so relatable because I guarantee other people are going to go, yeah, that drives me crazy too. All right, here's some more content categories. We definitely need to talk about our products and services once in a while. So go ahead and fill that in because they need to know what you do and what you offer. If we don't tell them what we do or what we offer, they'll never know. Because nine out of 10 times when people are on Instagram, they don't wanna get off the platform. So when we use terms like link in bio or go check out my website, they're not gonna, they won't. <laughs> so tell them right there in your news posts or in your Instagram stories or your IGTV, you just gotta tell them. Another great category is encouragement. Don't forget to encourage your audience. Be the light, be the motivator, because I know we live in a crazy world right now. So don't forget to encourage and inspire your audience. Another great category is benefits. This is a great category to talk about your offers or your products or services without being salesy. 
because you're going to focus on the long-term emotional benefits to working with you. What's the transformation? This is a great time for you to share testimonials. You're sharing the outcomes that people want without actually selling to them. So you're talking about the benefits. That's probably one of my favorite categories to put out there on Instagram. And then I know I talked about events. And then this last slide, I just put a few more in here. And when I give this um, document to Julie, you guys can print this out and you can use the blank space, blank space on this slide, I can't talk, and brain dump. Brain dump some categories that you think would fit your business. So I have on here a new blog post. If you're a podcaster, I hope you are talking about your podcast episodes on Instagram. And then of course, gratitude, right? Maybe you wanna do some mentor shout outs. Maybe you wanna make sure that you have tips and tutorials as um, a category every single week, or you wanna make sure you're doing that every single month. Now I know what you're thinking. Yes, Allison, these are great categories. But what do I talk about them? I'm not going to leave you hanging. I'm going to give you content ideas underneath each category. So remember, you guys are getting a copy of this. You don't have to, um, you don't, you certainly do not need to write all this down. Um, but I gave you examples under about me. I'm not going to read them all. I gave you examples under my why. These are just examples of the different kind of things or content that you can be talking about, that you can be creating. You can also do use these ideas and use them in your um, Instagram stories. Use them on your Facebook business page. If you have a Facebook group, if you have LinkedIn, if you have TikTok, if you, what else is out there? Clubhouse, Clubhouse is a new one now. And if you wanna get active on Clubhouse and you wanna take the stage, take some of these content examples, go on Clubhouse with them. So here's a ton of examples. That's, that's a great uh, point, Allison, that when you talk about recycling your content, and I do that because you create it once, but you, it's not for it's not for to be forgotten. You can reuse it. And even in, in two, three months from now, you can go back and, and reuse the same content because chances are, and maybe you'll talk about the algorithm a little bit, but a lot of people don't see your content. And so, or they may not remember what you talked about and all that stuff, but also my Instagram posts, I just take them and I bring them into my email list, change the words a little bit put it in my Facebook group. Like I move them around to the different platforms that I use. That's, that's brilliant. That's what I do. And I'm going to show you something else that I do that makes that even easier. I'm all about uh, visuals. So I think a lot of us have all this like content, like floating in our brain, but then for me, I need to extract it and I need to see it. So at this point, I've shown you the calendar, right? And we're just jotting down information. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Actually, you have told about that written text content, like ideas, but what uh, will you also tell like what kind of images or how we should get image because someone who is starting a business for many of us, you know, getting higher a new graphic designer can be a, you know, uh, not so cheap thing. So okay. will you? some kind of Instagram templates and or how to make uh, our content uh, visually attractive also because you see these days people are coming up with so much creative and visual appealing that they get attraction and engagement for that. All right, cool. Yeah, I will di definitely dive into that. Um, that actually kind of goes into my next step. So at this point, what I've taught you to do is really just map out your content for the month. So you have your printed calendar in front of you. You've jotted down the, uh, the holidays, any events, and then either you mapped out a daily theme at this point, or you filled in your calendar with some Instagram or content categories. Okay. So here's the next step. So I've done that um, for the month. And I do this at the end of the month. So most likely, probably this weekend, I will print out my March calendar and this is the process I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fill in my holidays, fill in any events that I wanna do, write down my focus or my theme, and then I'm either gonna do a daily theme or I'm gonna fill in my Instagram categories. So I do that at the end of every month for the next month, okay? 
But now it comes time to actually creating the content. And this is where people freeze because they feel that it's going to take way too much time, you know, finding things. So here's the cool thing that I do. And I've actually created this. Um, I came up with a social media planning workflow. And when you get this document, this is a clickable link. Just make sure when you open up this Google spreadsheet, you have to make a copy of it. Don't um, edit the original. Make a copy for yourself, name it whatever you want it. And I, this is like hands down gold. I have been doing this for probably six months now and I love it. All right. so. I'm gonna walk through it real quick and then I'm gonna to toggle over and show you the blank one and then I'm gonna show you mine, okay? So at this point, what you see here is this is a Google spreadsheet that I've created. I have Monday through Sunday at the top. On the left-hand side, these are all the social media platforms that I show up on a weekly basis. I know it looks like a lot, but I'll show you how I repurpose and spread out my content. So I'm not spending that much time actually creating content, okay? And so what I do is I always start with Instagram. Instagram is right in the middle. Instagram is my go-to platform, obviously, because I coach on Instagram. So that is the first platform that I focus on. When I'm in here on Instagram, I am a Monday through Friday newsfeed poster. Okay. That's my consistency. I show up for my audience Monday through Friday. What I will do here is I will look at my calendar and in here, I will jot down what I've already noted for Monday. Maybe it's what's new for Wednesday. It's a new podcast. I will jot it down in my spreadsheet and then I will note the deliverability. Will it be a photo? Is it going to be an infographic? Am I going to make a carousel? Am I going to do a reel, an IGTV, a quote, or a meme? I will make sure that I note that in here, okay? And then what I decide is, okay, let me look at my Instagram content. Is there any of that content that I want to share anywhere else on a different day? And if I do, I just note it all over the place. So let me show you what this looks like. All right, so let me, here's the copy. So when you open, this is a blank spreadsheet, okay? It has Monday through Sunday at the top. And then um, these are the platforms that I typically use. And then there's some directions down here. You'll notice, can you guys see at the bottom there? I even created four weeks. So within the spreadsheet, there's four different sheets for each week of the month. So I have week one, week two, week three, and week four, which is really cool. So from here, like I said, I'm going to start jotting down my content. So let me show you. Let me see if I can move this. All right, here's mine. So at the bottom, do you see how I have week one, February 1st through the 5th? All I had to do is I marked what week I'm on. So we're on week four already. Can you believe it? Here's my week four. This is this week's content that I'm doing. So as you can see for Instagram, I jotted down what I'm going to be doing. So on Monday, I did a post and I called it the Instagram diet. The S in parentheses means I scheduled it. So I don't even have to worry about it. I know that I created it and I scheduled it. Did someone have a question? I thought I heard somebody. No? Okay. Um, you'll notice on Friday, I have an IG reel being a mompreneur. So I keep all this. Um, I like to do this because it keeps me consistent and it's organized. And the reason why I use Google spreadsheets is here's the cool thing. I downloaded the Google Drive on my phone and I signed in. So not only do I have access to this on my computer, I also have access to it on my phone. So if I'm out doing something and I needed to go, was there anything I needed to do on my social media platforms today? All I have to do is open this on my phone, look at the week, look at the day of the week. And I know all my platforms, if something's scheduled or not, I know exactly what I need to do on that day. So I always fill in Instagram first, cause that's my preference. And then I decide where else am I gonna share that same content? 
what else do I want to do? So I'm really big into my Facebook group as Julie knows. So I'm in my Facebook group Monday through Friday sharing content. My Facebook page, as you can see this week, I only have Monday and Tuesday filled out. Like, I don't know what it is about Facebook pages lately. I feel like they get zero traction unless you're willing to pay for ads on Facebook. Like, I don't know. So I'll share like a static post. And I always share my podcast episodes on my Facebook page. I only share my podcast episodes on LinkedIn. I don't do a lot on LinkedIn, but at least I kind of have, have a presence there. I have Instagram stories. I'm heavy in my stories, So I always make sure I'll mark down some ideas. And then I have reels. Now what's so cool is since you're going to get a copy of this, you guys, you guys can change your platforms. If you only want to focus on maybe Instagram and one, one other, awesome. Do that. You do what you feel you can be consistent and without feeling overwhelmed. The minute you feel overwhelmed, you're going to stop showing up. So start with one social media platform and get really consistent with it and get confident showing up on that platform. Then you can start repurposing and showing up on other social media platforms. And I'm sure Julie talks about that. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to uh, just add to your, this is amazing. This, this, this sheet alone is gold. Allison, thank you so much. Um, but I wanted to, uh, to point to that. This is what I know about the Facebook business page. I think that if we're posting once a week, or twice a week, the recycled content, the thing about the Facebook page there is not a lot of traction. Mine gets zero. However, if someone comes to my Facebook page, at least it shows that I'm still alive. I'm still in business. And that's why we want to continue acting, uh, being active on our Facebook page just for that purpose. Not because it gets uh, a lot of uh, traction because it really doesn't. And uh, I love how you say, um, you know, do what feels good for you. And if you start with the one and then you get comfortable, and that's so important to remember is, is do what feels right for you. And then once you're confident and comfortable with the one platform, then jump on another. If it doesn't feel right, then try another. If only one is good with you, then do that. You got to do, I call it the feel good social media marketing, right? Right. And same thing with Instagram, because so many people look at Instagram and they look at all those features and they feel that they have to be using all those features all the time. You guys just do what you feel comfortable with and where you can get confident. So if that's showing up in your newsfeed, maybe four days a week for the next couple of months. And that's where you're consistent and confident. Amen. Do that. And then you can start dabbling in your Instagram stories. And then you can try maybe an IGTV once or twice a month. And it, you're just going to slowly build on it. It's just like a recipe. You have first have to do all, you know, start with the main ingredients, right? And then you add in all the little spices and add in the, you know, the add-ons, the vanilla extract, right? To get that special flavor. And then you get the, oh, wow, cake at the end. It's kind of like that, you know, that's, or, you know, riding a bike or starting anything new. You have to start with the basics and then work up to the other fancy features. So this is the, you know, how I work weekly with my content, how I fill it in in the spreadsheet. Once you have a copy of this, if you wanna use it, great. Make it your own, absolutely um, change it how you want. You can get as detailed in here, like you can see in here on Wednesday, I'm pretty detailed because I'm doing a live tomorrow on Instagram. And I had the ideas in my head, so I jot it down in there. So when it comes to tomorrow, I'm not going to forget and go, what the heck was I going to talk about? You know, I put detailed notes in there, you know, so get as detailed as you want. Maybe you just want to put your Instagram categories in here. So what I do is when I'm filling this out, let me go back to my slides here. So this is step four. This is what I'm doing once a week. I use my calendar, right, at the end of the month. Every single week, I will open up my social media planning workflow. For myself, I dedicate Mondays to my content creation day. If you want a different day, a different, you know, how you want to show up, that's great. I don't create content for my social media platforms every day. 
because I have other things to do in my business, right? I have coaching to do. I have podcast interviews and editing and, you know, email marketing and all, you know, I'm in another mastermind. So I dedicate one day a week to creating and batching content and I schedule it. I don't have to worry about it for the rest of the week. That's what makes this so easy. So here is the last step. For myself, it's Mondays. So once I have filled out that social media planning workflow, this bad boy, it's filled out, it's good to go. You know, I know where my focus is for the week. I know where I need to show up. This is where I will batch my graphics in Canva. Now I know Julie had Melissa in the group training on Canva. So if you guys really want to know how to create brand and graphics, cohesive graphics, go watch that training on Canva. I can give you Canva tips, but I'm telling you hands down, Melissa is the person to go to when it comes to Canva. So I will batch all my graphics in Canva. And then what I will do is I will use a, a third-party scheduler. There's Planoly. I've used Planoly in the past. Planoly is great. What's great about Planoly is when you're uploading your graphics or photos of you or quotes, it'll show you what your newsfeed or your grid's going to look like. So you can kind of get a quick glimpse of what your newsfeed will look like on Instagram. You can use Later. I've never used Later. I'm actually using Tailwind right now because I already use Tailwind for Pinterest. And then all of a sudden I realized they also schedule posts for Instagram and I love it. So yeah. do I, Allison. It's amazing. <laughs> so I have a question. Like huh? mainly, mainly creative uh, entrepreneurs, like you say, that uh, Tailwind should be used for only, mostly for Pinterest because it's famous for Pinterest. So if we compare Planly and Pinterest with whom you would like to go for, like, uh, well, I used Planoly for, gosh, maybe two and a half years. The only reason why I decided to move over to Tailwind is, number one, it's one third-party you know, program. I was already using Tailwind, and to upgrade to the Instagram, it was pennies compared to what I was paying for Planoly. So I thought, why pay for Tailwind and then pay another company, Planoly, to schedule where I can have one platform plan two um, platforms for me. So I was saving money and it was just easier because I was already in um, Tailwind and it was very easy to toggle over to Instagram, upload my photo, write my caption, put my hashtags in and schedule it for the day and the time that I wanted. And they also give you in um, Tailwind, they give you what your grid will look like. You can see your Instagram grid. So it's just, it looks very similar to Planoly. So that's why I chose it. But Planoly, Later, Tailwind, they're all good third-party um, schedulers. Now you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You could save your graphics to your phone and just have you know, your calendar with you. And if you want to post in the moment, you can, you, you have to do what feels right to you. I can give you all of the advice, all of the tools. It's up to you what you want to implement and what feels good to you. So I've done this for so long. It's so easy for me to do, but in the beginning, it took time. It took me time to work on that planning workflow to design it and know what's right for me. Once I realized I needed to batch my content weekly and I decided to make one day a week my batching content day, then that's when it all flowed. Okay. I didn't have to worry about anything else. I was just strictly on the content. So that's what I do. As on Mondays, I open up my social media planning workflow. I look at Instagram and go, okay, I'm posting five days this week. I need so many graphics. Oh, I need to batch a reel. I need to batch a video. So I will film it. I will save it to my phone. I will write my captions in Tailwind if in the moment they feel good and I'm ready to do it. 
if I have nothing coming to my head at that moment, I don't worry about it. I don't stress about it. I'll say, all right, on Wednesday, I'm going to do a static post, but I don't have a caption coming to my brain in that moment. No big deal. I will worry about it on Wednesday. I'm not going to stress myself out about it. And then, do you, um, yeah. Do you, still, do you still do your Canva planning or, you know, making of Canva post by yourself? Or do you have some team or VA to do it? Because No, I do it all on my own. I do not have a team. Great. Yeah, I do it all on my own. Canva will be your best friend when it comes to this. Once you find a design in Canva, I know on the design, there's like three little buttons. When you click that button, it'll you can ask for all the other designs by that designer. So that's a great way to get a bunch of designs that are cohesive. So that's a little tip for Canva. I learned that from, I, from Melissa. <laughs> Melissa, I know. And guys, in the comment, I linked um, Melissa's, uh, all of Melissa's designs because they're all cohesive and they're so easy to customize. So I linked uh, Amazing Canva Templates. If you click on that link, it will open up her page and you'll see her designs and you can use those. So have a look because they're really great and they're easy to customize and make your own. Allison and I use them all the time for a lot of our different posts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so does, does, does Melissa provide any training for it? Also any paid training or any paid, uh, you know, design graphics? Is she? Oh, does, does, um, does Melissa, Melissa have trainings yeah. on yeah. Canva? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mish, is she has, um, you know, made any course to teach, um, uh, you know, amateur like us? Oh, does she have a course for Canva? Ooh, I don't, I don't, know. I don't know. I don't think she has a course, but she has a multitude of different trainings on the different aspects of uh, Canva. So I think that, um, I think uh, if you get go, like if you start playing around in Canva, you're going to get the hang of it pretty quickly. But what I can do is I can maybe link her YouTube page because she's got some right, some really good videos on there about how to use Canva. Yeah, exactly. Because as of now, I'm seeing the link which you shared and she has uh, done a tremendous good job. <laughs> I'm liking it. Okay, so let me just real quick before I go to the next slide. Um, so step one is look at a snapshot of your month. Okay, decide on your holidays, decide on your special events and offers. Okay, step two, decide on your theme or your focus for the month and make sure it points back to your content or your brand pillars. And then step three, you're going to decide on your posting schedule for the month and fill in any of the content categories. I gave you a whole list of categories. You're going to get a copy. And then step four is when you sit down most likely once a week, fill in your social media planning workflow, decide you know, if you're going to start with Instagram and you're going to map out all the content, more concrete ideas for Instagram, repurpose it on other platforms. And then step five is when you batch. Okay. That's going to take the most time. The more you do it, the easier it gets. So I remember the first time I spent almost like a full day. Now I'm down to two hours. I can batch an entire week of stuff for Instagram, my Facebook group, I can do reels, I can do videos, and I can have it all scheduled in two hours on Mondays. That's how quick it gets. It just takes time and practice, and it's getting into your own workflow that works for you. All right. So you could actually also do this one day a month too, if you really wanted to. And if you were, uh, you wanted to power through a month's worth of content, you could sit down at the beginning of the month and just power through and schedule it all, right? Yeah, but absolutely. Here, here is my uh, view. I think uh, instead of going for a month, if we go by weekly basis, then I think uh, it's much better because, you know, every go a week when you evolve, when you look new feeds, maybe some new ideas can come up. So you can include those also. And I that's feel. very true. Yeah, because I used to try to um, create my monthly content at one time. And I realized in two weeks, things change. So that's yeah. why I choose to do it once a week. Because you just never know. Because, yeah, these days, you know, every week there is a new story. There's a new phenomenon, new right. event. 
can play around it. <laughs> right, exactly. There's a new feature on Instagram, you know. So, all right. So today, what you walk away with today is I hope <laughs> you have a newfound love for social media and content creation. I'm telling you, once you get into your own workflow and doing it over and over, you are going to look at content creation. You're going to be more excited about it because you're going to implement your own workflow for doing it. You will also get a copy of the Google spreadsheet. Just make sure when you open it, you make a copy and save it. This is a clickable link. I know that we are talking about Canva. I also have some Canva templates that I'm going to share with you. You can click on it and then edit immediately. And then if you want to snag some free captions for social media. I know writing captions can be a little daunting. Sometimes you just don't know how to speak or write to your audience. So I'm going to give you some caption templates to get the ideas pumping in your brain. And and they also correlate to the Instagram category. So that's what's really cool. I included those Instagram categories in my free caption templates, which is really cool. So for newcomers who are just starting in a structured way on Instagram, do you think that they should go with, you know, paid uh, captions for for their feeds? Because, you know, many times you are lack of ideas initially. So is it a good choice to get uh, paid uh, captions? Because in the market, you know that there are many paid captions are going on, like in $30, $50, $100. My gut is going to say no, because those are mass produced and they're going to sound stale. Um, When you're writing your captions, you need to be speaking to the one person. So like I said, uh, the three C's to growth, the first C is clarity, get crystal clear on your audience. And when I mean audience, I'm not talking about a group of people, that one ideal person that you can visualize sitting in your living room having a cup of coffee or a glass of whiskey with, and they are coming to you for help and you are speaking to that one person. So when you're writing your captions, that's what you should be doing. Visualize that person sitting next to you going, Hey man, this is what I think you should do. This has been my experience. Sometimes I'm like, Hey mama, Hey friend, you know, I got your back mama. Cause I speak to mompreneurs. I speak yeah. to that one gal that I have in my head. Every time I write my captions. I pretend that she's sitting right next to me. So from for captions also, have you made any kind of a structure or framework? Like you have already told this thing, like clarity of your audience and uh, out of your audience, you are uh, talking to your ideal customer. I see avatar, one avatar living in your, like sitting in your living room, like you are uh, telling. So do you have any structured, like you shared for the things, do you have any structure for caption also? Because, you know, uh, these days, I think in Instagram algorithm values the captions also. Because okay. they're coming with a long length and, you know, breaking into parts. So it's awesome. People are um, getting it. It depends on your audience. When you're speaking of long form captions, it really depends on your audience. Like I don't do a lot of long form captions because, again, my audience are moms. They're busy moms. My moms are not going to sit and read. But if your audience loves articles and they're, you know, wanting information and that's how they consume their information, then long form captions might work for you. So what I do though for captions is I make sure that I start with maybe a hook or a headline that's going to grab their attention, right? And then I will start with the story of either, you know, a funny story, how I relate to the story. Then I transition to why it relates to my audience. And then I end with the CTA or a call to action. I know I have a podcast episode on how to write captions. I can look at what episode number that is and send that to Julie. Hopefully Julie will remind me. (laughs) But I do have um, a whole episode on writing stellar captions for Instagram. I think there was like five points or five steps to it. I can't remember which episode number it is, but I will look that up. I'm looking now to see if I can find it. Okay. But I also want to let you know that you guys can connect with me on social media. Ask me any questions. I'm on Instagram at Allison, Allison Scholes, or you can go to my website, bossladyinsweatpants.com. But I am so passionate about helping 
entrepreneurs build their brand, scale their brand on Instagram. I do offer 90 day Instagram intensive mentorships. It's one-on-one and you basically have me in your back pocket for 90 days and I'm working with you and doing a lot of things for you. So that's the Instagram intensive mentorship or if you're a DIYer and you kind of want to work at your own pace, I do have the social brand accelerator program that walks you through everything on Instagram from mindset to content creation hashtags, writing captions. I think I have a caption template vault in there. That's over a hundred caption templates. I have stock photography in there. And what's cool about that program is you have lifetime access. So once you're in, you're in, and I'm always adding to it. I'm always adding trainings. So that's probably like the best place to start is the social brand accelerator program, because it starts with three main modules. I basically walk you through the three C's of Instagram. I'm going to walk you through your own brand clarity and your ideal audience, how to get to your niche, how to get to your audience. And then we go through the content creation. Then we go through the execution and the consistency. And then there's a bunch of other trainings that go along with that in the social brand accelerator program. What's the price for that, that training? The social brand accelerator program is $97, which okay. is a steal because you have lifetime access. Totally a steal. It's a steal. And I will guarantee it'll probably go up soon because the amount of trainings that's going in there, I just put the Instagram Reels training. So it's hashtag training. One time $97, right? It's a one time $97. One time. I've added the link in in the chat. I'm a giver. I don't believe, you see, that's the thing about being an entrepreneur. And I don't know if you guys relate to this, but about two years ago when I was building my business, I needed help. And anytime I looked at trainings, coaching, online courses, I could not fathom the cost. Because here I'm starting out and these people were charging 500 or more. And I could not afford that. And I just wish there was someone out there that could provide the training at a reasonable cost. And that's why I do it. I don't believe in overpriced products. I think it's silly. Okay. So uh, you do uh, training for once in a week in this group, right? Social brand accelerator. Once in a week, uh, live training, isn't it? Oh, for my social brand accelerator program? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a self-paced course. So you can go in there and choose which training you want to take. I'm not adding to it weekly. Just when I create a new training, that's when I add to it. Okay. Also, Allison is always, like Allison is showing up um, high level in her Facebook group. So if you're in part of her community and her, if you follow her on Instagram, she's always sharing so much good, valuable information to, for us. And also she has amazing challenges for us to, to get us out of our comfort zones and get going in this whole uh, social media yeah. world. I just, I just saw that her podcast series are, you know, based on different, different topics every week, interesting topics. Like some on brand, some on Instagram. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a video challenge going on right now in my Facebook group. So if you're leery about getting on video, I'm going to get your booty on video. I'm I have confident. I've put the request for social media. Okay. <laughs> I will I make sure you're in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazing. Does anybody else have any questions while we still have Allison on the line? You guys can feel free to put it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask your question. Um, this was such a great workshop. Like the, you covered so much. I'm going to try. I'll see if I can do this. I'm going to okay. try and copy the PDF into the chat. Okay. So people can have it right now. Cool. And then I'm going to share the replay and I will include all of the different things we talked about. You know what? I'm going to stop sharing. I can go to the chat. Okay. No questions. I get. I guess when there's no questions, it means you did good. 
<laughs> I hope so. I hope that works. <laughs> If, um, um, like it's when we're starting or even like not starting when we're like a year into our business sometimes and we know we need to do this whole Instagram thing or social media it's so hard to figure out where to get started and this it was the perfect training for that to get us kind of like you know and and as you mentioned a few times baby steps you know yeah, yeah. and we have to remember to Instagram and any really social media platform it's all about the long game. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You're not going to get the DMs overnight. You're not going to get people signing up for your email list overnight. But the whole point of Instagram is growing those relationships. And it's just showing up with consistency. You are there to share your knowledge, your voice. And I think don't be afraid of that because we watch so many, you know, creators on Instagram and we think, wow, you know, they're kind of doing what I'm doing. So why should I share what I'm doing? You need to share what you're doing because you're going to share it in your own way, your most authentic way. No one's going to share it the way you do. And someone out there needs your message. So when you're on Instagram, you're there to serve your audience, be authentic with your content and just be consistent. And you will see growth in the long run. You will see people coming from Instagram, going to check out, you know, your profile, eventually clicking the link, getting on your email list. And then that's where you're going to go deeper with them. Once they're on your email list, you know, I know Julie talks about having an email list. She's going to pound that in your brains, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then you, you nailed it. You said building relationships. That's what we're doing. We're building relationships with these, these amazing people and we're building that like, know, and trust factor, right? So it's a, it's definitely not an overnight. It's a long game. And you know what? Those people who get 10,000 followers in like two weeks, that's just not reasonable like it's not ideal they most likely bought it yes yeah and, and to say that they have and here's the other thing if you compare someone who has a thousand followers to someone who has ten thousand followers who's to say those ten thousand followers are their ideal clients who's to say they're even engaged versus the one thousand followers that are highly engaged people who are their actual ideal audience or their ideal person. That's what you want to focus on. If you have less followers, but they're highly engaged, you're doing it right. Yes. And that's way better. It's quality over quantity, right? Um, I And I just wanted to also add to your training that because sometimes we overanalyze and we're, we, we, we get in our heads and we think, oh, is this going to be good enough? Or, or, and I had this conversation with one of my friends a few weeks ago where she was analyzing her content. And I said, Amal, I said, just be yourself. Just share what your heart is telling you to share. Follow your intuition. Let yourself be guided and take in perfect imperfect actions every day right and baby steps and then that's just because if we analyze and we wait until we think we have it perfect or right we may get we may stay stuck for who knows how long exactly. right exactly. yeah take messy action because Teresa just asked yes what was the name of the program about starting video I put that in there and she put scared to death to videos so Teresa, today is your day. You're going to take imperfect action. So turn on your video. Ask me a question. Like that's the best way to start is just to do it. I don't know how many times I've hit the live button on Instagram and totally tripped over my words. Who cares? No one's going to remember. <laughs> I did that. Did, was it with you when we were doing a podcast episode that I totally, I was it with you. I was like, uh, I'm totally having a blank right now. <laughs> plenty of them here's the thing people don't care what you look like people don't care how you sound they just want to learn from you so i always guide uh, entrepreneurs on instagram when they're like well i'm gonna i want to go on video but i don't know what to do your content should either entertain your audience relate to your audience or educate your audience stay in those three you're golden mm -hmm. so entertain relate or educate it's all you need to do with your content. And I think a good way, like for me, because I still get like a little bit scared or whatever. And then you know what I do? I kind of just like, I say it. 
And, and, you know, having that 30 seconds of courage and then if you're feeling, if you're feeling a little bit nervous, say it. I'm feeling totally nervous, guys. And then you break the ice and then you can get talking about what it is that you want to talk about. And then you'll see it'll flow so much better than if you're trying to pretend like you are that person who is never afraid of showing up on Vizio. Because I think that the most experienced and seasoned still have fears about showing up on video, right? Yeah, and I think we don't see that enough on social media platforms in general. Um, it is a highlight reel. You're only seeing, you know, the best versions of them. They're not really showing what it really takes to grow a business. I mean, I launched a course two years ago and it was a flop. It was terrible. I made zero dollars from it. it. It was just awful, but that's, that's how you learn. You just got to take those steps, you know, that's, out. and that's, that's the journey. And then having those flops is not failure, right? It just right. means that, okay, that's not what my people are looking for. Exactly. So I'm going to look at it. I'm going to, what are the lessons in this and move on, move forward, get back up, get out there. Right. Teresa says she's actually working her other job right now. <laughs> So, but she loves how real the two of us are. And, and that's really how we show up on our social media platforms, right? Like I'm still getting the hang of it myself with the, with the reels and the videos and showing up live. Like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm all new to this stuff. I'm good at posting, but showing up my face. And that's why I've really enjoyed these guest expert trainings and podcast interviews because having the, that interactive conversation is so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Julie, I couldn't thank you enough for having me on today. I had a great time, you know, sharing what I do on a weekly basis with content and just remember it, just make it your own, figure out your own workflow. Don't compare yourself to other people. If you find yourself consuming too much content without actually implementing anything you're learning, then you're going to be stuck in a state of inspiration and you need to move from a state of inspiration and go to a state of doing. And when you're not doing, make sure that you stop consuming all that content. Get off of your social media platforms. Mute people that you follow. Mute them for a while. I've had to mute people for a while because I still do it. Yeah. I still get stuck in imposter syndrome and I go, ooh, should I be doing that? You know, I just had that a couple of weeks ago with Clubhouse. People were telling me, get on Clubhouse, get on Clubhouse. And it just wasn't sitting right with me and I was feeling pressure to do it. And then I decided, no, I'm not doing it. I feel the same way, Allison. I was like, Clubhouse, everybody's doing it. Does that mean I'm going to have to do it too? And I'm like, I am not feeling it. So I'm not doing it. I'm, yeah. I'm like doing good with the things that I'm doing right now. And these are my feel good methods of sharing my content. And that's what I'm going to go with. So, but thank you so much for being here. I think that I think that if we were to have other questions, I think they would have came up, but this was such an incredible training. Thank you so much for being so generous with us. And I'm gonna definitely have the replay. I'm gonna share with, with everyone because this was invaluable. So thank you so much for being here today with us. Absolutely. Allison, you are really awesome. Oh, Julie. thank you. I appreciate that. And yeah, come over to my group too. I'll help you out. Or yeah, I have joined, I have a question for the group, join your Instagram and looking forward for your course. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. We're going to say goodbye. Bye. Peter. Bye. Bye. One question. Uh, One question. You give oh, a question. It's Mary. It was entertain something and then educate. What was the middle E? Oh, uh, relatable. Anything relatable. Relatable. Thank you. It was a wonderful morning. I loved it. Thanks, oh, Julie, yeah. too. Julia, will you send the, uh, you know, the, uh, the whole presentation on email or where? Like, link to her presentation. Oh, it'll be linked right in her group. Her, the okay. Facebook group. In my group. And in I'm going to also share it with Allison. It'll be in her group also. And uh, where did you find out about this training, Ankit? So, uh, actually, I... Uh, like uh, subscribe for your email list. I was going through regarding Instagram and uh, then I got, you know, uh, your you're on an email list. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I because I will share it also there, but, but quick tip for you. If you're, if you're following the YouTube channel that I shared, 
I will also I will I will send it by email, but I will also share it on Facebook and YouTube. Okay. So please share the YouTube channel link and YouTube group also. Uh, sorry, Facebook group also, so that I can join your group too. I okay. Have, I have requested so, for her now for yours too. Okay, so this is. Uh, my YouTube channel where my guest expert trainings are, and then I we will share Allison's Facebook group and then my Facebook group, and then you sure. got you guys got her website, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So this is Allison's Facebook group, and then I'm just gonna go grab mine quickly. There you go. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. So you guys have all the links before I shut down. <laughs> you know how that goes and then they go away. <laughs> but you will, if you're on the email list, you'll see I'm going to send out the replay and everything. So That's great. Thank okay. So Yay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. I've sent the request kindly, accept. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>